On this edition of Newswatch 18, early boating has started at ISU. We have the details. Also, we have an interview with Justin Long you'll have to wait to see. And we have coverage of the local college debate last week. You're watching Newswatch 18. This is Newswatch 18. Newswatch 18 starts now. Thank you for joining us for the October 16th edition of Newswatch 18. I'm Katherine Kuckelman. And I'm Scott Stralo. Before we get started with our stories, we'll turn to our meteorologist for an overview of the weather. What's it looking like out there, Sam? Hey guys, well it looks great. Uh, you know what, we actually have a little bit of rain that could be creeping into our forecast, but otherwise temperatures are going to cool down a bit. We got a nice weekend coming up. So let's go ahead and take a look at our weather headlines though. Let's pop those up right now. So it looks like what we've got actually is a chance for rain coming up. Our temps are going to cool off as we head later into the week. And then like I said, we do have a chance for rain about uh, early morning tomorrow and then also possibly into Thursday. So it's looking okay. and. Um, I'm going to be excited to bring you the forecast later on in the show here. Early voting started this week all around campus. Voting will be held at six different locations around campus, including the Memorial Union and Parks Library. Students can also vote at the County Auditor's Office up until November 5th. If students have not registered to vote, they can sign up at one of the voting centers. Students must bring the last four digits of their social security number or their Iowa driver's license number to register. You can also request an absentee ballot. Voting centers on campus will be open from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day this week. Justin Long was on campus today supporting President Obama. He spoke about students' responsibility to vote. It's easy to vote. There's no reason people shouldn't be getting out and voting. If you can't vote on November 6th for whatever reason, um, if you're, you know, you got tests or, or you're massively hungover, or, you know, whatever, whatever the case, uh, just get it done before. And that's kind of what we, we've been encouraging people. We're not encouraging people to be hungover, but that is, I understand that's the reality. Uh, and uh, so you just get it done. You know, it's just a matter of doing it. So you have no excuse. Voting begins November 6th, but you can vote early here on campus. While the presidential candidates square off in their series of debates, the college Republicans and Democrats set up their first. Catherine Kuckelman and Maria Melizignoli continue our election 2012 coverage. The College of Republicans and the College of Democrats had a debate Tuesday night in the sunroom of the Memorial Union. Junior in advertising, Maggie Hughes, said she was impressed with both sides but would have liked more balanced questions. I wish that the College of Republicans would have brushed around the issues of the economy. Um, I also wish that they were, there were more social issues brought up. The Democrats were disappointed that they were asked the first question so frequently. Um, a lot of the comments that the College of Republicans ended with. Um, I had um, prepared responses for and didn't get to talk about it in the general debate. Not only was the audience impressed with the performance of the two teams, but the debaters were as well. I, I was very confident in, in our team's ability and, and I'm very proud of how they, how they performed tonight and I, I do agree with the judges' uh, decision. I think we showed up with all of our facts laid out. Being politically active is incredibly important for students. Students are the future of the United States. Um, their decisions now are directly going to affect policies that will influence the decisions that we get to make in the future. This election, more than any other election, is, is going to affect how we deal with America's problems in the future. I'm Katherine Kuckelman with Maria Lizignoli, ISU TV. The next debate is set for Monday evening. ICTV will have continuing election coverage until Election Day on November 6th. Last Friday was the start of Iowa State's annual Family Weekend, where parents and family members were encouraged to visit their ISU students. The Memorial Union held a variety of games and activities Friday night, hosted by the Family Weekend Planning Committee. Bingo was a popular favorite, which gave out fun prizes and gift cards to select winners. In addition, entertainer and comedian John Cassidy performed two free shows in the sunroom, featuring magic, comedy, and impressive balloon creations. The turnout was successful and gave students the chance to connect their family to the Iowa State experience. The nonprofit organization Little Dresses for Africa will be holding an event at the workspace in the Memorial Union this weekend. 
Volunteers who come will make dresses out of pillowcases. The workspace will provide supplies, but volunteers are encouraged to donate new or gently used pillowcases. Even if you cannot sew, people are needed to cut and iron fabric as well. The, work the workspace has sent over 400 dresses to Africa prior to this event, giving relief to the children of Africa. The event will be held Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday from 1 to 4 p.m. The event is free and requires no, no registration. Something is bugging Iowa farmers and ISU researchers have figured out what. Tiny insects called aphids have recently become a primary threat to Iowa soybeans. According to researchers, these bugs have the ability to block the genetic defensive responses of soybeans, allowing other pests to do more damage. Aphids emerged as a serious threat to soybeans 12 years ago. The insects are native to Asia and can reduce the yield of infested fields by up to 40%. This Saturday, the College of Human Sciences Kinesiology Department will host a contemporary dance concert, which will feature students and local dancers, as well as international guest artists. All proceeds go to the ISU Dance Scholarship Fund that helps benefit dance ma emphasis majors and dance minors. The event takes place in the Betty Toman Dance Studio of the Forker Building at 7 p.m. this Saturday. Cost is $10 or $5 for bleacher seats. Will Chandler, what's going on in Cyclone Sports? Quite a bit, actually, but you'll have to find out after the break. You're watching Newswatch 18. Welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm Chandler Nissenson with your Cyclones Sports. The Cyclones hosted the number six ranked Kansas State Wildcats in Ames on Saturday. Kansas State opened up the scoring with a 41 year field goal. They were answered by the Cyclones on the first play of the second quarter on a two yard touchdown pass from Jared Barnett to Sean Charles Johnson. Before the halftime, the teams traded touchdowns with the Cyclones, scoring on a 30 yard pass from Barnett to Ernst Brunt. A series of big plays led to another Wildcat score in just over one minute of play, and the Cyclones would not retake the lead again. The Wildcats led at half 17-14. Kansas State scored late in the third quarter on a 12-yard run, touchdown run by Heisman candidate Colin Klein. The Cyclones would fire back with a two-yard touchdown run by Jeff Woody, but the number six Wildcats did just enough to hold off the Cyclones. A strong showing by the Cyclones against Kansas State and their strong early season schedule put them at number 24 in the first BCS rankings. The Cyclones travel to Stillwater next week to take on struggling Cowboy squad. The game will be broadcasted at 11 a.m. on FX. The number 22 Iowa State Volleyball team's goal of the Big 12 Championship is on the line tomorrow night as they face number 8 Texas in Austin. After sweeping the West Virginia match, head coach Christy Johnson Lynch stopped short of calling this one a must win, but said this game it's said the Cyclones need to win this game if they want to win the conference. The match will be broadcasted on Fox Sports Network tomorrow at 7 p.m. There is no rest for the weary as the Cyclones will also face Oklahoma at home Saturday. ISU sits in a three-way tie for third in the Big 12 with the Sooners and the Jayhawks. The Cyclone soccer came out with confidence against Drake Sunday at the new Cyclone Sports Complex. Junior Jennifer Dominguez continued her scoring tear with a pair of goals in Iowa State's 3-0 win over Drake. Junior Aaron Green got the third goal in the Cyclone win. Dominguez has set a mark of 13 goals this season that ties her for second all-time at Iowa State in scoring goals with Joe Hanks. Dominguez extended her Big 12 goals scored lead in the first seven minutes, giving the Cyclones a 1-0 lead. Coming in after halftime, Dominguez scored again with an assist from Meredith Skett. The third and final goal scored by Aaron Green outside the penalty box ended the game with a 3-0 win. Iowa State record stands at 10-7. The Cyclones reached the 10-win mark for the fifth time in program history and the first time since 2005. ISU returns to the Big 12 Conference Friday with a road trip to Kansas. The Cyclones will face the Jayhawks Friday at 3. That's all I have for sports. Sam, it's been really nice. What's the forecast? Well, the forecast is we've got a shot of rain in that forecast, but temperatures are going to get pretty nice here in the next few days. So stay tuned. This is Newswatch 18. Hey, everybody. This is meteorologist Sam Shard. Felt, you know, like a little bit more at the end of summer than instead of the beginning of the fall. We actually had fantastic temperatures today, about in the mid-70s. So your current temps right now in Ames is about 57 degrees and not a whole lot of clouds out there in that sky with a gentle south southwest wind about 9 miles per hour. Now, this viewer photo was actually sent in by the chief photographer the, for the AMS club, Bryce Link. This He took this uh, sunset there at Ada Hayden Link, and I thought it looked absolutely beautiful. He said, it's, he said it looked like the sky caught on fire he thought when he took that. So I thought that was absolutely fantastic. So 68 degrees in Boone, about 64 in Ankeny, and about warmest in Des Moines. We typically expect that from Des Moines, but 66 degrees. Current temps uh, around the state, Ames is at 57, a little colder off to the north in Mason City, 52, and about 59 in Fort Dodge. 
So pretty nice all around the state, and we won't get too horribly cold as we wake up. 50 degrees in Ames, about 55 in Des Moines. And then over here on the western side of the state, Sioux City at about 51 degrees. So nowhere near freezing temp, but unfortunately, those are going to want to come, come real close heading into this weekend. Tomorrow's high is 64 in Des Moines, about 60 in Sioux Falls, and about 64 in Lincoln. And then around the state, more specifically, 61 in Waterloo. Down here in the southeastern part of the state, Ottumwa, you guys are going to be at about 63 and about 64 over in Council Bluffs. So a pretty nice day tomorrow, still a little bit cooler than what we saw today. Taking a look at satellite and radar around the state, we've actually got a low pressure system here sitting up just in the north of Iowa and kind of an odd frontal system just here off to the north and east. But uh, it's not producing a whole lot of rain in the state, and actually it's trailed off, and we do have another system wanting to push in from the west. So we'll take a look at more what's left in Iowa for our rain right now. Just a few showers off to the north and east of the state, but those are continuing to push out, and really the clouds are leaving with it as well, although we have a new deck kind of sliding in from the west, helping to keep temperatures a little cool for tomorrow. Now we're going to have some rain coming into that forecast, like I said, and the cause of it is this big, big low pressure system. You can't even see it off to the north of our boat, uh, banner, sorry, but that's going to slowly creep in. So this cold front is going to be why we get some of that rain. About 10 a.m. on Wednesday, we'll see kind of maybe the heavier patch four A's of rain, especially, and it's going to keep sliding on through. And we're just going to have clouds sticking around here about 5 p.m. on Wednesday. But then as we keep heading through the week, high pressure is going to want to come on in and maybe bring us a little nicer weather after the system moves through. But this low pressure is going to want to swing back towards Iowa. And with it, we'll just kind of have wraparound rain from the system, a little bit sneaking back in here through Thursday, maybe towards later in the evening. And then we'll just have clouds heading into Friday. So this is our Adonis model running what it thinks we're going to have for rainfall. Not a whole lot throughout the state. Some of the heavier spots here down in the Tama, 0.15 inches. And then again, up to the north and west part, about 0.07 inches. But Ames really not getting a whole lot of moisture, just maybe a speck or two of rain is going to hit Ames, Iowa. So heading into tonight, you're going to have a 49 degree temperature, partly cloudy with a few morning showers, maybe after 4 o'clock or so. And then tomorrow, about 63. Small rain accumulations, but it will be breezy, actually. A stronger wind, uh, 13 to 18 miles per hour out of the west-southwest. Then as we head into our extended outlook, looks absolutely great for you. Wednesday and Thursday, again, small chance of rain. Friday, about 54 degrees. And then take a look at that game day here in Iowa, at least 62. Uh, so a good-looking weekend. And that's all I've got for weather. Now back to the desk. Sarah Pratt, the carver of the famous Iowa State Fair butter cow, is coming to Iowa State. In honor of ISU's 100th homecoming, she will be sculpting Sai out of butter. Pratt will begin sculpting the 300-pound Sai October 22nd in Kildee Hall. The College of Agri Agriculture and Life Science Ambassadors, as well as the Dairy Club, will be welcoming viewers every day, selling homemade ice cream and giving out I Saw Butter Sai stickers. The viewing window in Kildee will be open every day from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. October 22nd through the 26th and October 27th from 7.30 a.m. to kick off of the homecoming game. Iowans stumbled onto the streets of Des Moines for brains last, Saturday, last Friday. Kate Hurley has the story. Zombies have taken over downtown Des Moines. You heard that right, zombies, for the fourth annual zombie walk. The Zombie Walk is in support of Central Iowa Shelter and Services. People came out to show their support, even those that don't necessarily like zombies. Personally, I don't really like zombies. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the uh, fun of getting together with a bunch of people and, yeah, for a common cause. With the first walk held in 2009, participation has doubled every year since. <laughs> This year's walk included a surprise guest, the East High Marching Band, in uniform complete with zombie makeup. I'm Kate Hurley with ISU TV. Students are encouraged. Students are encouraged this week to tell their teenage brother or sister to put down their cell phone while they're behind the wheel. If that doesn't work, let them know that it's National Teen Driver Safety Week. The goal is to raise awareness over unnecessary teen deaths associated with teens texting while driving. Car crashes are the leading cause of teen deaths. 7.4% of Iowa drivers are teens. Adults are encouraged to be good examples by not distracting themselves while driving. Uh, that's all we have for tonight's edition of Newswatch 18.
Be sure to tune in again on Thursday at 8 for your latest update of Cyclones news, weather, and sports.